Hi, this is Mike Queen from WinCNC, and I'm going to do the second part of a video tutorial that I'm doing on doing a two rail sweep to create a bowl. In the first part, I created this cross section profile, and in the second part, I'm going to create the bowl. The first thing I need to do is do the two rails for the two rail sweep. So the first thing I need to do is to create a circle. Now this bowl will be 14 inches in diameter, but I'm going to create my circle at 14.4 inches. And that's so that I can include these 0.2 inch outside vectors here on both sides. And the reason for that is so that I can get this rounded over lip on my on my bowl. Without adding this, I'd have a hard time getting that without cutting all the way down the side, and I don't want to do that. So I have a 15 by 15 piece of material that's two inches thick, and I'm centering my circle at seven and a half and seven and a half. In other words, a dead center on my part. So I just click create and close. So the next step is I want to show you in nodes I did node editing. I pushed the N key and got node editing. You'll notice that there are four points here, four node points on this circle. All these points are exactly the same except for this one at the top and that green node point means that this is the starting point of, for this circle. This would be where it would start cutting and also where it would finish cutting. It's also where it would start on the two rail sweep and since I need two rails I'm going to duplicate this circle. Then I'm going to change it. The first thing I want to do is do control C and control V and what that did was it copied the one that was there and pasted it right back over itself with a control V. So now I want to go back into node editing mode and you'll notice the start point still up there. What I want is the start point down here on the second one. Vectric gives us an easy way of doing that. You just hover over the point that you want to be the starting node and hit the P key and now I'm happy with that. So in reality, I have one that has a starting node up here, another that has a starting node down here. This is not like a normal two rail sweep. This is done just a little bit differently. I've never seen anyone do this before, but I'm sure that someone out there has figured it out. And Vectric may possibly have a video on it, but I have never seen it. Anyway, I'm going to go to my two rail sweep. I'm going to select both of these and by coming from the right to the left anything that I touch with that will be selected so I got both of these so I use say use selection the next thing I want to do is select the vector the vector for my cross section and that's this one so I've got everything I need so the next thing that I'm going to do is hit the page up button so that we have side-by-side -side screens. Now you can see the 3D view and the 2D view. And The reason I'm doing that is so you can see this form this bowl. And I click apply and there it is. If we pull it up you can see that it's created it. It does have this outer lip though, and we do have to deal with that here in a minute. But for right now, we're just going to be happy with what we've got. So I will maximize this view. Well, I'm going back over to this one first. Close this. I'm going to select this one of these circles. I hit the F12 key to come back over and I want this. Hit the F key to 
bring that in. Now I want to create a 3D roughing pass. Now I'm, I'm only using a quarter inch end mill. I could use a lot larger tool here. I could use a half inch to clear this out quicker, but I'm just doing this for video purposes, so it really doesn't matter what tool I use. I'm just going to go ahead and use this tool. So I just click Calculate, and it does a roughing pass. And I'll go ahead and preview it. it takes a little time because I did use the small tool, and it doesn't go too deep per pass and we are cutting 1.9 inches deep for this bowl. Okay, so you can see that it did all the rounding and that, and it looks pretty good, but we're not finished yet. So we go back to close, and now we do a 3D pass. Make sure that our circle is selected. It is. So now I have a quarter inch ball nose. Uh, I'm going to raster it uh, at zero angle, no boundary vector offset. And it looks good, so I'm just going to calculate it again. that looks good so I will preview it you can see that's smoothing it out really well got my round over real well the next thing I'm going to do is do my profile to cut it out so I'll just go ahead and click on the profile pass. I'm going to use the same vector boundary here that I used before. But the the thing is, if we if we looked at this again, we have that lip. And if I do this as a standard vector, I mean if we do this as a standard cutout or whatever, it's going to be on the outside, especially since I'm using outside, it's going to be on the outside here and it's going to leave that large lip sticking out there and we don't want that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a negative 0.2 offset because I know that this lip is 0.2 so that should push the tool right tight in against this round over around against this round over lip and that's what I want to do I'm not going to use tabs on this because I want to be able to delete the outside the the leftover material. If I use tabs that would lock it together and I wouldn't be able to, to delete it. So I'm happy with that so I will bring this back up and I'm going to click calculate again and you can see that it has eight passes there and I'm just going to go ahead and do preview visible toolpath and it cut it out. Now what you can see there if you look close, is that it cut it right in against that rounded over edge, and that's what I was trying to do. So I can double click this, and my waste material goes away, and now I can move it around better, and you can actually see that it did cut everything away all the way up to that rounded over lip. And that's how I would make my chip and dip bowl if I were going to do this. Uh, the only thing left to do would be to go to the save toolpath and make sure that all my toolpaths were selected and do a save toolpath. Um, I'll save it and I'm ready to cut it. Um, I hope that this was informative to you. As I said, I've never seen this done before. I'm sure that somebody knows how to do it or knew how to do it before, but uh, I thought it was kind of cool to be able to do this. Uh, if you like it, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.